In this video we're going to continue looking at domain and range uh, with some slightly more interesting functions uh, than in the previous video. Uh, again, remember the domain is the collection of all the acceptable x values or inputs of a function. Uh, the range, uh, write that down for you, domain is the x values. The range uh, is all the y values. Uh, or outputs of the function, all the legal y values. Um, again, remember from the last video that the easiest way to, term to determine the domain range of a function is to graph the function. Um, again, I can't really stress that enough. Uh, and again, on the graph, you're looking for things like locator points and arrows. Uh, they'll kind of give you a clue as to um, what x and y values the graph actually takes on. Uh, also a good rule of thumb uh, to follow is that if the graph has arrows on both sides then the domain is probably going to be all real numbers uh, and we're going to see that uh, in this next example. So I got a function for us. It's y equals negative x squared plus 6 and I've graphed it already. Uh, notice that I've labeled that locator point. It's actually the vertex of the parabola, 0, 6. Uh, the 0 is the x coordinate, the 6 is the y coordinate. Uh, and I noticed, and I've already put the arrows in, um, so hopefully from your previous work with uh, parabolas you know that those arrows are supposed to go there. Uh, since this graph is continuous, uh, those arrows indicate that the graph keeps going forever in both directions. Um, on the left and the right, it goes downward forever on the, both the left and the right hand side of the graph. So in other words, every x value, um, negative numbers, positive numbers, zero, fractions, decimals, all the x numbers have a y value associated with them. So what that means is that the domain of this function is all real numbers. So I can write that with an inequality if I want to use uh, the infinity symbol. Now I don't want to use equal to with infinity because we never really equal infinity. We just It's just a number, a representation of a number we'll never get to. Um, so I'll use uh, negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity. So again, that's the inequality version of all real numbers. Sometimes uh, you might see this funny script R written for all real numbers. It kind of looks like an R with a double bar uh, through it. Occasionally you'll see that. Um, if you want to write this with the interval notation, uh, again since these are not the equal to uh, inequalities, you want to use parentheses. So I'd use negative infinity, comma infinity, uh, enclosed in parentheses. Uh, so it's important to point out that the domain of all polynomials is all real numbers. So it makes your life a whole lot easier if you're working with a polynomial, something um, where um, the exponents are all positive whole numbers. So x squares, x cubes, to the fourth, fifth, to the hundredth power. As long as you don't have any negative exponents, uh, any um, variables in the denominator of a fraction. Now you can have fractional coefficients. This could be something like negative one-fifth x squared. But as long as the um, variable is not in the denominator, you're okay. Square roots are not polynomials. We'll tackle one of those uh, in just a little bit. But for polynomial functions, the domain is always all real numbers. Now the range is a little bit trickier. Uh, notice how there is no function graphed above the locator point. So what I mean by that is, look in this region up here that I'm highlighting. Now there is grid up there. That's, there's a difference between what I call a graph and the grid. Um, when I reference uh, the graph of a function, I'm talking about this blue graph, not the grid lines. Uh, so you'll notice there's no blue graph in that region above the locator point. Uh, so that kind of gives us a clue about the, ra the range. Um, so the highest point on the graph is that vertex, that locator point, 0, 6. Uh, so since the graph is continuous, those arrows down here indicate that the graph continues downward forever. So every y value below and including y equals 6 are in the range. So when I write the range down, I say you always start with the lowest range value, which in this case would be negative infinity, because the lowest y values are down here in, in negative infinity land. Uh, 
they go and again I'm talking about y values it goes up to and includes the 6 another way you could write that uh, you could just write y is um, less than or equal to 6 so those two uh, equivalent inequalities that say the same thing about the range. Um, if I wanted to write uh, the interval notation for this, I would use negative infinity, comma, 6. And notice since I have, uh, notice the infinity gets a parenthesis since it's not included, and we never really reach infinity, um, but the 6 gets a bracket because that's a closed dot. Alright, let's look at another function. This one is y equals x minus 2 squared minus 5. Now I didn't give you the graph on this one on purpose because a lot of times you'll be asked uh, in textbooks or test quizzes, whatever, uh, what is the domain range of this function and you won't be given a graph. Well, at that point, get the graphing calculator out and graph the function. Um, if someday you become a math teacher, which means you've kind of had a lot of practice doing this kind of thing, you can look at these and kind of figure out what the domain range will be without graphing it. But really, when I'm doing that, when I think about it, when I do it in my head, I'm really thinking about what the graph looks like. Uh, so I just have a graph in my head that's, that I don't graph on a calculator or draw out by hand. Um, but for students, I'd encourage you to put this in the calculator. So if I enter this, I got x minus 2. I want to square it and subtract 5. So I'm going to hit graph. Graph looks like that. Now I've already taken the liberty of actually copying this thing and I can paste it on our workspace here. So there's our graph. So that's what the calculator looks like. So notice, the calculator did not put arrows on it, but again, hopefully from your work with parabolas you know that there's arrows up here. So this graph goes up on both sides forever. Uh, also, I know that the locator point uh, is right there. That's the vertex. And I also know I can tell what that point is. I can count it off using the graph, or I can use the equation um, that I'm given there. If you think back to the Algebra 2A course, uh, we learned about the locator points of quadratics. Uh, this one happens to be 2 comma negative 5. And remember, 2 is an x value. The negative 5 is a y value. So, what's the domain of this thing? Um, I've already got my locator point listed. I've got my uh, arrows drawn. Um, so, since the this is a polynomial, that's really all I need to know. It's a polynomial, and it's continuous and has arrows. It's a safe bet to say that the domain on this thing is all real numbers. So, we've already listed what that looks like as an inequality. Oops. It's negative infinity is less than x, which is less than positive infinity. And again, if I wanted to write the interval notation, it looks like that. So when you're talking about domain, it kind of looks like coordinates, but that's not really the case. It's not coordinates. Um, but these are just x values when I'm talking about domain, and I write the interval notation. Now, when I go to write the range, um, the way to determine the range of the function is similar to how we determine the range of the previous function that we worked on. Um, again, there's no function graphed uh, below this locator point of 2, negative 5. Uh, that means that the range is all the y values that are going to be greater and including y equals negative 5. So again, down here in this yellow zone, there's no function graphed. All the graph lies up here. So all the y values occur below, above y equals negative 5, and so that happens to be uh, what the range is. y is greater than or equal to negative 5. And again, if you wanted to write um, negative 5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than infinity, that's another acceptable way to write that. Also, the interval notation would be bracket negative 5. Since it's a closed dot, there's actually a point at 2 negative 5. So negative 5 comma infinity and I got a parenthesis there. Alright, another kind of polynomial is a cubic. Uh, so again, since cubic functions are polynomials, I know that the domain on this one is all real numbers again. 
So from negative infinity, which is less than x, less than infinity, or negative infinity, comma infinity if you're using interval notation. Notice that this function is continuous. All polynomial functions are continuous. And the arrows on either end of it indicate that not only does it decrease, as x values get smaller, the y values get smaller in the negative reach. I guess they get larger in the negative sense. Um, large x values are associated with large y values. Large, so it kind of, this graph, if you can imagine it extending on forever and ever, you eventually cross over the x-axis and the graph takes on positive x's and it's also getting increasingly, increasingly larger y values. Um, so, um, that gives me a clue about the range. Um, so since the thing is continuous and it's a polynomial, um, I know that the range on this is also all real numbers. So again, it's very similar, except instead of writing an x, I want to write a y. And there's the interval notation for it. So the polynomials are actually the easiest uh, functions to find the domain range for. Um, again, the domain's always all real numbers. And then just take um, a look at your locator points and your arrows to figure out uh, the range. Well, let's look at a function that is not a polynomial. The square root function is not a polynomial. Um, you'll recall from algebra 2a that that exponent's a half. That's why it's not a polynomial. Polynomials have positive whole number exponents only. Um, the square root is a one half power. Um, so here's how we attack that. Um, there's two reasons why x values are not in the domain. One reason is um, division by zero, but we don't have any division in this problem. The other one is when you have square roots of negatives, and that could possibly be uh, a problem in, in this case. Um, but again, keeping that in mind, I still want to think about the locator points. I still want to think about the arrows. I've got those drawn in here for you. Um, the locator points at negative 2, 5. Um, so for this function, whenever x values are below negative 2, that expression x plus 2 right there will be negative and therefore will have a square root of a negative number. So that's why the graph actually stops right there. If I get out here, let's pick a number like negative 10. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8 and I can't square root negative 8 and get a real number. So that's why there's no graph out here. The graph doesn't start until I can take my first square root which would occur when x is negative 2 because negative 2 plus 2 makes 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Um, and then after that, for every x value greater than negative 2, um, I can substitute that x value into the function and have a number that is square rootable. If square rootable is a word. Um, but that's what occurs. So if I plug a 6 in, for instance, 6 plus 2 makes 8, I can square root 8 and get an answer. Um, so that gives me the clue as to what the domain is. So the domain starts with the first square rootable number for this particular function which happens to be negative 2 and it's equal to that I can substitute negative 2 in legally I'm dealing with x values since it's domain and it continues on to infinity because I can take any number greater than negative 2 and eventually and plug it in and get a uh, answer out that's legal. So you could also, on this particular problem, um, write x is greater than or equal to negative 2. That's another inequality way to write the problem. Now the range, as in the previous examples, notice that the function is not graphed below the locator point. So if I come down here again, there's no blue graph in this yellow highlighted zone. So none of these y values are in the range. So negative 6 is not in the range. Uh, 0 0.5 is not in the range. Uh, 4, y equals 4 is not in the range. The first y value that is in the range is the 5. So if I write my range out, again I can see this by, you know, this function is continuous. 
uh, and that arrow indicates that it just keeps going up and up and up eventually it'll hit all the y values above negative 5 so my range is y is greater than 5 I'm going to go ahead, you could also write uh, 5 is uh, it's also it's greater than or equal to 5 sorry about that since there's a dot there um, that's another way to write uh, the range and the interval for that is uh, common infinity.